What distinguishes a modern West Coast IPA from a hazy IPA or an American IPA? A new school modern West Coast IPA is gonna be really, really hop forward. It's gonna have big, fruity, hop aromatics. It's gonna maybe have a little bit of cannabis notes, like going towards a slight dank, but not too dank. The body's gonna be super light. It'll be very pronounced, it'll be very easy on the drinking side of it, but still have big impact. Whereas an American IPA, you're gonna have more caramel malt body, a little more depth in the body as a whole. You use a wide range of hops from the classic sea hops and new school fruity hops, a mix of both, but you're playing off of some more of that caramel malt body in with the hop fruitiness. Whereas a hazy IPA, you know, it's gonna be real fluffy, and that big texture, big, huge impact on the fruit and the aromatics, but also like really full flavored and more sweet in the palate and more an overall round beer itself. When speaking to the evolution of IPA, we started off in the 90s with a big caramel base, which was the beginning of the American IPA. We were balancing that out with sea hops and you got the big sweet, uh, with a big bitter, big citrus notes. That evolved to a West Coast IPA happening in California that was brighter, leaner, more bitter, and a little bit more aromatic. Meanwhile, the American IPA movement kept happening and evolved with new varieties coming to the market like Citra, Mosaic, huge tropical fruit flavors, mango, blueberry, that lifted off that caramel malt base. That then led to a new development on the East Coast of hazy IPAs big texture and rather using caramel malt to use the base of the body, more adjuncts like oats and wheat to give this really, really soft round base and then throwing a ton of hops at it. You got big fruit, big impact, big aromatics. And then we've seen now West Coast IPA is back. It is now brighter and less bitter than it used to be. It has huge hop aromatics similar to the hazy IPA, but on a much leaner, drier base body with big juicy fruity flavors, a touch of cannabis notes, and overall great drinkability. As craft beer as an industry is constantly evolving, so is IPA. I think in this current movement of West Coast IPA, it is a playground for new ingredients such as concentrated hot products like Cryo or CGX, stylized products, and even terpenes. Do we know how much or where of these are gonna be used within West Coast IPA itself? We're unsure, but right now we know we're looking for new ways to create big aromatics, big aroma, big flavor with lots of drinkability. And this beer seems to be such a great playground. I think it will evolve as we continue to drink it and brew it more but I think it's an exciting arena for us to see where the future of like lean, drinkable, hop forward beers will go. Sustainability within the brewing industry is very important. And as an industry, we're always looking at ways to be more sustainable industry and be more sustainable brewers. Looking at these new hot products that are now available to us is a way that we can reduce vegetal matter and plant load coming into the brewery and able to keep our waste streams lighter and brighter and less load on our own wastewater treatment systems, but also our municipalities that we're in. Meanwhile, it gives us the ability to work with a more concentrated hot product that allows for potentially bigger flavor, longer shelf life, and overall improvement of the beer. Where these things will take us, it's too soon to tell at this point, but we do know that we're seeing some early results that are exciting, and these are still in the early stages of the products, and we're also still in the early stages of figuring out how can we reduce our footprint from a sustainability position as a brewery, and these might be an avenue to help us within that mission. Bream West Coast IPA, we started off building it like all other beers here at Bream. We want something super clean, very drinkable, while still having big impact and high quality. What we're doing with this beer to achieve that is we're using a two row base of very high quality malt. We're lightening up that base with corn sugar, and then we're building that up with a couple different hops mainly Strata from Oregon, Citra from Washington, and then we're also using a new 
hot product from Crosby from their CGX line based around Strata. This has given us some really, really nice strawberry and tropical notes with a little bit of cannabis to take it up to the next level of depth. What we have is this very drinkable, big impact from a hop flavor and aroma standpoint, and then super crushable. Myself and the whole Frame crew are super excited about our West Coast IPA. We love the drinkability component. Most of us drink a ton of lagers and love the drinkability and flavor of craft lagers. And I think one thing we have with the West Coast IPA is we have big impact from hop flavor and aroma with massive drinkability. I think that gets us fired up. Beer should be fun. We love drinking beer and we want a beer that goes down and we get to the bottom of the glass and we're already looking for our next one. I think we achieved that with this beer.